uh, hopefully we're just racing in the dry and uh, and we don't have to worry about all that mess. I don't want to be negative and say it was a snoozer, but I don't know. I don't know on the entertainment level scale, uh, you know, compared to Atlanta, it's not very good. Notebooks are not very deep for this nope. race, so how do you attack it? Welcome to the backstretch. I am News 5's Heather Williams, and we are back on the concrete on the back stretch and the front stretch at the bristol motor speedway it's going to be a a fun weekend of racing i can't wait to see what the cars look like on the concrete at bristol drivers fans media members everyone has been begging for the concrete's return in the spring so it is finally here um it's been a long time since we've raced in the spring on the concrete so i think it'll be interesting to see you know what transfers over from the night race who's fast the last time we raced on the concrete at bristol anytime other than the night race was in 2020 the all-star race chase elliott won the last spring race on the concrete was 2020 actually in may because so even as a COVID, company i think it was you know race. very head scratching so, why at the beginning we I'm all excited. four of us just I, went I I instantly straight to the back we just I've really struggled before. but i am interested to see you know how this all turns out what happens on this track racing in the day in the sun it's going to be warm ish for march certainly not as warm as it is during the night race even at night so how do the cars the engines attract how does it all react to the temperature changes drivers have told me it's not a huge deal but i would think it would be some deal and there's not a, a deep notebook over the last three years especially in the next gen era there's not any notebook on how the race in the day at bristol so it'll be fun it'll be interesting and i can't wait to see what happens today on the backstretch of course chris will join us as always to talk about racing in the spring at bristol about what his team's got planned for this weekend and, and and about you know what you can expect to see this week we are also going to be joined by harrison burton he's the driver of the number 21 for the wood brothers the wood brothers have had a complicated relationship with bristol of course elliot sadler won here in the wood brothers car and they've had some good finishes but not a lot of wins not a lot of success but harrison loves this track and i think he's excited to get on track this weekend and see what happens so let's get fired up so we are now joined by our crew chief chris carrier who is gracious enough to have us in their race shop here at the food country usa racing shop we got the number 75 pop sales truck that you guys are going to run this weekend at Saturday. bristol behind us before we talk about uh the cup stuff just talk about the excitement of racing at bristol your home track this weekend oh it's uh it's it's to the point of it's like overwhelming but it's a good overwhelming because this you know so this, this is our heather this is our super bowl we've said it before it's like our uh, our biggest deal. We love racing at, at home in front of the Bristol fans. It's people that we, we know. It's our families. It's people people that shop at our stores, people that work uh, at our stores. Also, our employees. It's just, you know, it's just a big family here, and there's a lot of really passionate race fans. And uh, we, get, uh, we get a lot of questions and stuff from people going through the stores, customers. And it's just, you know, we... I don't know, it's a feeling of pride, you know, it's self-pride. We want to go out and perform well uh, in front of our local people. I heard Kevin Harvick this past weekend talking about Phoenix, and he said, it's just, you know, it's where I'm from, it's, it's, it's my home track. He said he had a really good record there as a driver. He said, I always just put that little extra effort into it. And I mean, it's human, it's, we all do. We want to be able to do well and be able to, you know, keep our heads up on Monday after the race and so on. And, and we just enjoy racing there, and I know we're partial, but we think it's the greatest racetrack on face of the earth. I mean, it's Bristol, man. It's it's it, it's the only one. So we're getting ready. We feel very good about it. Uh, Stephen Parsons, our driver, uh, PopSales.com, sponsoring us for this weekend. Um, you know, we're we're uh, we're itching to get at it. So let's put Bristol aside for just a second let's okay. go back to phoenix mm -hmm. christopher bell gets the win he breaks the streak mm -hmm. of chevy wins a little bit of redemption for christopher bell the last two years of the championship four he has finished at the bottom of the four drivers at phoenix lasted i think less than 20 laps this past fall uh how good was it for him to get that monkey on off his back in the sense of if he wants to get back to the championship four and have something for them again this year at the end with thing yeah i understand it's uh 
I think it had to be, um, I don't know what the word was, but very gratifying for him, you know, and, and a, probably gives him a little, he and his team, a little bit more of a encouraged, peaceful feeling to look forward to that time when they, you know, hopefully they'll get in the top four for them. And if they do, everybody knows that the championship race is at Phoenix. This is the only time they've got really to work on things for the championship race. And for him to be able to say, hey, we've got a good package, we've got a good setup, we've got, you know, we've got things figured out. We won the race here uh, last week and uh, we, can, we can go off all that for Phoenix and we're gonna be maybe a leg up. And the fact that a lot of the other Toyotas, including his teammate, Denny Hamlin, uh, ran very well during, at portions during the race, the, led the race and so on, sat on the pole. So there's a lot more information there for them to benefit from and for that for the championship race uh, if we were going into Phoenix right now in the championship race I would say Christopher Bell for Christopher Bell's probably got to be the favorite so a lot was made last year and really the year before about the short track package mm -hmm. um, we got our first glimpse of it at Phoenix they made some changes to it mm -hmm. did it improve the racing I'm not sure. I, I'd, I'd be honest with you. Uh, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to be negative and say it was a snoozer, but I, I don't know. I don't know on the entertainment level of scale, uh, you know, compared to Atlanta, it's not very good because Atlanta's well, like way well, up most here. Most races compared yeah. to Atlanta are not very yeah. good. So I don't know. I, th I think that, you know, we need to see better, but. Uh, Let's let's give it a little bit of time. We got we got Bristol this weekend, which promises to be good. We got you know we got Martinsville pretty soon. A little later on, we got uh, Wilkesboro and then a couple more. I, th I think we need to give it a little bit more time, and and maybe they'll tweak on it, tune on it a little bit to try to. I mean that they're doing the rule changes. They're doing the rule changes to a make sure they've got a, a quality, a level playing field uh, across the board with the different manufacturer, car manufacturer teams. But the biggest thing they're doing is trying to make better racing. You know, be, be, you know actually passing and, and rubbing a little bit and not running around in a line following one another and being able to race, you know, competitively like NASCAR fans want. And, and I'm sure that if they think this isn't working and isn't giving a good product, they're going to change something until they to get it right. I mean, they got, like, let's face it now, the Speedway package, Daytona Atlanta, the, the, that package is pretty good as far as the entertainment value. So this week, we'll go now back to Bristol. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the key to that track? Because especially, well, I guess for you guys too, you haven't raced in the spring mm -mm. ever in the trucks, right? It's always been Never. the Never, no, it's always been the Xfinity until they had the dirt, right. and then we, we, we took the Xfinity place, so I guess now maybe we got it permanent. Um, but then also, the Cup Series hasn't been there in the daytime, except nope. for, for a, a rain out since the dirt, so nope. notebooks are not very deep for this nope. race, so how do you attack this as a crew chief? I think, to me, I just look at it like I look back through the history, the the trends of things, of the races we've run at Bristol. The thing about it that, it, you know, the concrete, the, a concrete, the concrete surface does not like change dramatically from daylight to dark as an asphalt will, as most asphalt tracks will. Um, the biggest guessing game for us right now I think is like okay they apply the resin to the bottom of the racetrack and they basically do that uh, the, it'll be Saturday this year but they always do it the first day that competition is going to be on the racetrack um, the resin that they use now this is nine times out of ten rule of thumb is is less heat sensitive to like the PJ1 that they used to use. Uh, but still, there's a little bit of an unknown going in. It's not going to be very hot this weekend. I think we're going to have good days to race on. Weather-wise, we're leaning on Dave Dirks for that. But I, th I think that the, the you know, we'll be a little bit tentative. We'll, we'll be the first ones on the resin, and we will be one of the first ones on the resin. So 
uh, you know, we'll be a little bit tender to see, okay, how grippy is that stuff to start with before it gets a lot of heat in it. You know, now, as our race gets over with and then up into the cup race, probably 100 laps up in the cup race, you're going to see that top lane up there against the fence get really dark, and that's just rubber. Uh, me personally, I wish that could happen during a truck race, but it, we just don't put enough laps on it for that to happen very well. So we'll see how that changes through the cup race, and that'll change everything. That'll change the racing a thousand percent because you'll have both lanes on the bottom. Both of them will be widening out a little bit as it goes on. You may even see some three wide stuff. You know, real racing. I'm not talking about just, oh, somebody's out of a groove. I think you might see some three wide stuff, you know, pretty good. So it'll be good racing. It's Bristol. <laughs> All right, so first of all, let's just start with this, Harrison. Um, talk about coming to Bristol. Obviously, a track that's historic. Obviously, a track you've been coming to, watching races since you were a kid. Do you ever lose the the goosies of walking through that tunnel and seeing that big, huge, massive structure at Bristol? No, Bristol is always cool. It's just a cool atmosphere, and and um, you know, when you're racing in kind of that stadium atmosphere, it's kind of like a you know, it, it feels like you're in a football stadium when you're in the middle of that thing with the stands up everywhere. And, um, you know, the fans are always wild, having a good time. It's a great atmosphere. And, and uh, I'm excited to be uh, back on the, the concrete again. I think the racing will be good. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to get out there and, and uh, kind of enjoy that racetrack. It's one that is uh, not hard to enjoy. It's, uh, you know, it's a really, really special place, a lot of history, fast racetrack all the things that drivers like so um you know it's it's hard to ask for much else other than that so you mentioned that it's like an arena <clears throat> almost like a football stadium um how hard is that from a driver i mean i've taken laps around there sometimes it's really hard to tell where you are on the track because it looks like you're just constantly running in the same place almost yeah um it's interesting you know the first few times i went there it was a bit of that feeling of like oh my gosh you know it's constant going around and around and around and you get confused which end of the track you're on uh i remember my first practice there it was in a uh cane and your arca car now that uh that was true i didn't know what where my pit road like entry was gonna be and uh it was confusing but then now um i know enough about i guess the shapes of the corners are slightly different and uh, you drive them a little bit differently and, and, um, you know, ever since I kind of race more there in trucks and Xfinity and stuff, I don't really have that issue just cause one and two is, uh, I don't know how much, but it's slightly tighter than three and four, as far as the radius goes and, and, uh, makes you drive it a little bit differently, especially when you're on the top, uh, three and four feels like it goes on a lot longer than one and two. So, um, that's kind of a, a good tell for, for experienced drivers of like, oh my gosh, you know, when you're a kid and you first show up there and they look the same, uh, and you get a few laps under your belt and you start to realize how to drive them differently. And, um, and then it, uh, it starts to be easier that way for sure. Um, do you guys even have a notebook for this race? Cause I mean, you haven't run Bristol in the spring in the daytime, right? In the cup cars. So, and I know they drive completely different for the night race. So do you even have a notebook to, to base things on this weekend? Not a huge one, but, you know, I, I definitely take into account the practices that we've had there typically in the daytime, uh, qualify to, typically kind of in the daytime as well. And, and um, yeah, that, that kind of translates and the night race translates too. it's going to be very similar to that. It's just going to be a little bit less grip, I would imagine. Um you know, and, and the pace might be a little slower, but it's not going to be very drastic, if anything. So, um, yeah, I think the notebook from the night race kind of carries over and, and the way you drive it uh, as a driver carries over. It's just uh, you might have to slow yourself down a little bit, getting back to the throttle and whatnot, um, you know, compared to the night race when the track is cool and you've got all the grip that, that you could uh, kind of ask for. It's, it's actually crazy how how hard you can drive a race car there and at the night race and especially when you get right up against the wall and, and the lane moves up, you are driving hard. So uh, that's, that's pretty fun. And, and something I look forward to doing in the daytime as well. Uh, there's talk of weather this weekend. And I know that they tested the, the, uh, I guess you call them damp tires um, at Bristol. What do you think about the possibility of raising Bristol uh, on those weather tires? I hope we don't do that. I don't know. <laughs> that would be crazy, but uh you know, the, the good thing about all that stuff is uh, everyone's in the same boat as, 
kind of I, I would be right so uh that would be pretty brave i would imagine um to try and do that in the rain i, I think you know we'll we'll see how nascar kind of elects to use that um option i i really haven't heard a whole lot about how the test went to be honest so uh, hopefully we're just racing in the dry and uh, and we don't have to worry about all that mess. So what's the key for you this weekend? I mean, obviously um, you guys haven't done anything like Bristol so far this year. I mean, Phoenix is a short track, but it's completely different from Bristol. So what's the kind of key for you and your racing this weekend? Yeah, I, you know, for us, I think showing up prepared is, you know, always the key, no matter where you are, but Bristol in particular, um, you know, think about how important qualifying is at Bristol. Uh, you make one slip and you're going to be starting, you know, say 25th and, and it's going to be hard not to go a lap down. Those leaders aren't that far behind you when you start and such a disadvantage to be in dirty air. You could have a really good car and be back there and just be stuck. So, um, you know, I, I think qualifying to, for everybody is kind of the most nervous time you'll have throughout the whole weekend because it could really set up or really uh, ruin your your chances at a great race weekend. And, and um, you know, say we do qualify well, I think after that, it's really about executing a race. Uh, you think about all the errors that you can have at, at Bristol. Um, you know, pit road is really, really tricky to get onto without causing a crash. Uh, if we do have green flag stops. Um, even pit road in and of itself is really tricky to not speed on. Um, you know, you, you're going through different corner sections and you're on there for a really long time and you have to stay really, really focused on your lights. So, um, you know, I think step one is qualify well. And then step two is, you know, really get after it and, and push all the details, but, um, you know, make sure that you can execute a whole, a whole race and, and get out of there, uh, you know, in one piece. For my final thought tonight, I want to talk about that darned concrete, you know, People have been clamoring for it come back for years, but, you know, you don't have to have a long history of the sport or, or a really great memory to know that when we were racing on the con concrete in the spring, nobody was showing up. Nobody was here. The, the stands were, and I'm going to say nobody, that's kind of a little bit of a misnomer because, I mean, there were 50 or 60,000 people, which at most tracks is a sellout, but at Bristol makes it look empty. and Fans were complaining about that. How about nobody went to the spring race anymore and, and and racing at Bristol wasn't that good in the spring or whatever your complaint was, it was happening. So you've got the spring race back on the, the on the concrete after the dirt experiment, which did increase people, but you got what you wanted. You, you got this back. You got it off of Easter. Now it's up to you, the fans, to show up. You need to show up to this race. If you want racing to continue at Bristol, if you think this concrete race, like many of the drivers have said, is one of the best races on the schedule, then you have to be here. You have to show up and you have to show NASCAR that you want it here on the concrete like you've asked for. Otherwise, it's all just talk. Thanks for joining us on The Backstretch. We'll see you next week.